Hi, I'm Bill Butts, President of the Population Reference Bureau, and I'm here sitting with James Valpel. Dr. Valpel is the founding director and still director of the Max Planck uh, Institute for Demographic Research in Rostock, Germany, uh, and is also a professor at Duke University, as, as well as other kinds of responsibilities in Europe, the U.S., and, and around the world. We're sitting here in Vienna at a park uh, during the meetings of the European Population Association. And I asked Jim to talk to us today briefly because not only does he direct the Max Planck Institute, but also he is a leading scientist, scientific researcher in his own right, and much of his research in recent years has concerned human longevity. Uh, Jim, human beings live longer than they used to, and I'm wondering, have we just about reached the end of that progress, or do we have further to go? There's been an absolutely remarkable increase in human longevity. For, for most of human history, though, the last 10,000 years, humans have lived about, have had a life of 20 or 30 years. But starting around 1800, and particularly around 1840, life expectancy started to take off. And it went from 30 years up to 86 years today for Japanese females. It's a really huge change. A really huge change. And it's been a, in the countries that are doing best, it's been a, a linear change so that we've been gaining about two and a half years of life expectancy every decade. Two and a half years per decade, that's three months per year. That's six hours per day. That's remarkable. Yeah, absolutely remarkable. And, and this, over this long period of time. Over this long period of time. And those are the countries doing best, and other countries in the world have been catching up to the countries that are doing best. So, by and large, the countries in the world have been converging in terms of long life expectancy. There are some exceptions. In Sub Saharan Africa, there are countries that are not gaining life expectancy. In the former Soviet Union, there are countries. Yes. So the world as a whole has been this remarkable increase. And it isn't just the industrialized countries. Not just, no, no, no. China, for example, is gaining life expectancy. India is gaining life expectancy. Okay. So large parts of the world, South America, Brazil, are increasing, life expectancy is increasing. But the, the, uh, the remarkable thing is that there's no sign whatsoever of any deceleration, no, no sign of any slowing down in this. And the, uh, it, it appears that this six hours per day we just continue. We don't, we don't see we don't see any sign of it becoming five hours a day or four hours a day. It's still I see, six hours per I see. day. But it's not getting longer either. It really, no, it's not, it's it's not getting longer. Constant. It's pretty much constant. Uh, so uh, maybe there'll be some biomedical breakthroughs that speed up the process so that we gain eight hours a day instead of six hours a day. Maybe there'll be some terrible things that happen resulting from climate change or economic collapse or warfare or terrorism that'll reduce it. But, but if uh, the long-term historical trend over the past two centuries suggests that this six hours a day will continue into the future. And well, how far into the future? How, well, long, how long can yeah. we live? Yeah, so that we have, of course, it's very hard to predict the distant future, but there's no evidence that, um, that this uh, progress is going to slow down in the foreseeable future. And there's no, there's no biological reason it should, there's no, there's no biomedical reason it should. So if you take this rate of progress that uh, humans have been benefiting from and project it forward, then uh, newborn children today in the United States and in, in uh, Western Europe and in uh, Japan and other countries with high uh, levels of income, newborn children in those countries can expect on average to live more than 100 years. More than 100 yeah. years. And in many other countries, in China for example, uh, newborn children might live into their 90s. Remarkable. Remarkable. A huge change. A huge change. And I think this is not widely realized at all. Well, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that they're likely to live much longer than their parents and grandparents. Yes, yes. And that um, I, I got a call from a reporter from BBC Radio the other day, and he asked me how long he was going to live. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, how old are you? He's 34, he's male, he lives in England. So I looked it up in my uh -huh. forecast, and 89.6 uh, was, was his <laughs> forecast life expectancy. But his son or daughter? Would be, would be another 20 or 30 years yeah. longer than that. But, but then I said, uh, do you smoke? Do you drink? Are you married? Do you have a good job? Do you watch your weight? Do you get exercise? Do you take care of your health? Do you have any health problems? No, he, he's doing very, very well. So so he'll probably live uh, four or five years longer than average. So, so I said, my best guess for you is 94. <laughs> and this is a 34-year-old guy. So, uh -huh. And he's, he said, 94. Does that mean I have a 50-50 chance of making it to 94? No, no, no. 94, that's the mean. That's the average. Your 50-50 point is 97. 
Yes. He has a 97% chance of, I mean, a 50 50 chance yes. of making it to 97. And then he said, Does that mean I'm, I'm going to die at 97? I huh. said, No, no, no. You're not going to die at 97. You might die tomorrow. You might die at 105. Uh -huh. There's a lot of possibilities. So he said, Well, what's the most likely lifespan for me? And the most likely lifespan, it turns out, is about three years longer than the 50 50 lifespan. Yes. So his most likely lifespan is yes. 100. Is 100 already. Yeah. Already. Already. Yeah. I Which mean, no, projecting. Yes, exactly. But this is a 34 year old man in England, and he may live to 100. Yeah, remarkable. He's remarkable. Tell us a little bit more, Jim, about how you arrived. You've talked about trends in the past yeah. and how there's nothing known that's going to interrupt this trend. Yeah. Is there any other kind of research that supports these, this kind yeah. of so, very so, optimistic, let's call it optimistic? No, I don't forecast. think it's optimistic. I, I think it's realistic. It's, yes. a, it's a, an extrapolation. There are a number of biomedical researchers who think that we're on the verge of major breakthroughs in cardiovascular disease, in cancer, and Alzheimer's disease and understanding the process of aging itself. Yes, yes. And if that happens, and if we can slow down the rate of aging, then my predictions are pessimistic. Yeah. On the other hand, all sorts of terrible things can happen. Sure. And so I might be optimistic sure. in that sense. Sure. But the, the 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 main evidence is looking at the historical data and extrapolating the forward. Yes. But the the secondary evidence is is there any reason, any biological reason, why we can't live to hundred? And so there's been a lot of research the to try breakdown to, of cells. Yeah, is it telomeres or, yes, or okay. is there some is some biological obstacle? Yes. And uh, no one has been able to identify any biological obstacle. And the, if we maintain our car, we maintain our kidneys and yes, have a good yes. lifestyle and get proper medical care, then then these organs can lay off uh -huh. well past them. Uh, is there any evolutionary reason why Mother Nature would design us so we couldn't live to a hundred? No. The, uh, there's no evolutionary reason we should live to 100 because we don't have babies when we're 100. Yes. But there's no evolutionary reason we shouldn't be able to yes, live to 100 either. See. Evolution really doesn't care in some sense about uh, I see. the survival uh -huh. of our old people. Well, does this prospect, if you think about the, uh, the government institutions in the world, the Social Security Administration yeah. in the U.S., and most countries have some sort of a function like that, yeah. that are making actuarial forecasts, are they taking account of this? information or do they tend to underestimate, yeah. under forecast? Up until recently, almost all the statistical agencies around the world severely underestimated life expectancy. And if you look at the forecast they made 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yes. 30 years ago, life expectancy has exceeded those okay. forecasts. But, but it's changing and, and many statistical agencies are now recognizing that uh, this long-term historical trend in life expectancy in the absence of any strong reason to think of or slow down, suggests that they should be more optimistic about the projection. So, there's a, so it's taking hold. It's beginning slowly to take yes, hold. Yes. And the, uh, the Census Bureau in the United States now is, is experimenting with some new methods. Yes, of yes, right. that I'm aware of that. Would, would have higher yes. life expectancy. Yes. And the, the German Actuarial Society has revised its uh, life expectancy predictions. This is the Society, actual society that advises German insurance companies. Yes. And their latest forecast is that a newborn German child has a life expectancy of 105. Amazing. Yeah. So this is the, the German Remarkable. Actuarial society. Remarkable. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. Well, Jim, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I know the people watching will be uh, educated and uh, I think surprised, many of us, by what you say, and uh, but not surprised that Professor Jim Garpel will have based it uh, in strong science. It's a pleasure. Thank okay. you, Jim. Thank you.